Who would die in a battle between a leopard and a porcupine? If you answered leopard, then you're wrong. You see, sometimes a porcupine can kill a leopard. As crazy as it might seem, the quills on the porcupine are so dangerous, leopards sometimes die from excess blood loss. In this clip, you can see a leopard tracking down a porcupine on a village road. The incoming traffic had to stop and watch this apex predator fail miserably, trying to take down a seemingly helpless prey. Little did the leopard know, this would be no easy lunch. Clearly, the leopard had no idea how to take down this prickly prey, so it tries to use its normal attack strategy, attacking from the back with the paws. The beautiful thing about this clip is realizing the porcupine didn't even run. Predators usually expect their prey to try escaping. So when the leopard saw the porcupine just standing on the side of the road, it probably thought, hmm, easy lunch. But as soon as it drew closer, the porcupine raised its quills and faced the leopard with its back. After several puncture wounds on the paws, the leopard gave up and decided to pursue a different prey. A similar thing happened in Yala National Park, Sri Lanka. As the leopard crept up on the porcupine, the small animal protruded its quills. Here you can clearly see that the leopard was ready to attack, but the black and white pointy quills changed his mind. The black and white pattern acts as a warning for predators. Since most predators are nocturnal, these quills protect the porcupine even at night. Also, they mimic the look of a skunk, which stops predators dead in their tracks. The leopard got the message loud and clear. The porcupine tried to poke the predator several times, but then retreated, seeing that the giant cat couldn't harm him. If you heard something rattling in the background, that's because a porcupine is smashing that like button, just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, it's because a porcupine is shaking its quills just like a rattlesnake's rattler. Similarly, the porcupine's quills are thick and hollow at the base, where they attach to the animal's skin. By shaking them, the hollow tubes create a sound that's another warning mechanism. In other words, if the spiky exterior, the black and white quills, and the rattling don't deter a predator from attacking, then they deserve every quill they get. When we say porcupine, we don't mean hedgehogs. Hedgehogs are cute and common pets. They eat out of the palm of your hand. Having a porcupine as a pet would be like sleeping on a bed of nails. Sooner or later, you're going to get stabbed. Porcupines will keep their quills down most of the time, but if they feel threatened or get angry with you, they'll raise them upwards, point them toward you, and start approaching. Although painful and dangerous, the porcupine cannot shoot its quills at you. That's from science fiction movies and comic books. The porcupines you find in the wild can walk backwards really fast. The moment you get close with your hand, they'll stab you. That being said, if the porcupine doesn't feel threatened, it will let you pet them. They pose no danger when their quills are down, and people don't pet the quills against the grain. To avoid getting quilled, specialists pet them from the back of the head to the tail. That being said, you should never, under any circumstances, try to pet a porcupine in the wild. You're just asking for trouble. Dogs have often tried to attack porcupines unaware they can do them serious damage. Because dogs usually attack with their jaws, it's not uncommon to see a dog with a mouthful of quills. The owners then have to immediately rush their dog to the vet, where they'll remove the quills one by one. Oftentimes, if there are too many quills, the dog will be given a local anesthesia to reduce the pain from the procedure. But what would happen if a honey badger attacked a porcupine? Surely the fiercest predator in the world couldn't be taken down by something as simple as a porcupine, could it? I mean, these guys eat snakes and have been known to defend their territory against much larger predators. Surely they can take a porcupine down, right? Not quite. In this scenario, the predator tried to take down the porcupine in the burrow, but it soon realized this was dangerous. This is probably the most dangerous way to attack a porcupine. That's because the little prickly animal knows to position its back against the opening of the burrow. This way, when a predator gets inside the hole, the porcupine can back up just a little bit and prick them. That's why you see the honey badger retreating immediately. We've talked a lot about porcupines, but never really talked about their quills and how they work. First off, let's start with the four types of defenses. 1. Quill erection 2. Teeth clattering 3. Odor emission 4. Attack The porcupine goes through all four steps if agitated or annoyed. The least aggressive is the quill erection, the first defense, and the most aggressive is the attack. This happens when the predators get too close or there are too many predators. Since there are different species of porcupines, there are different types of quills or spines. Most of them work on the same basic principle. They're located between the porcupine's hair and detached when pressure is applied on the top. 
When observed under a microscope, you can easily see why the porcupine quill easily punctures the skin. The North American porcupine has around 30,000 quills on their back, each of which has backward-facing barbs. This makes it easy for the quill to go into the skin, but pulling them out is difficult. This goes against the grain of the microscopic barbs, and taking them out is tough and painful, tearing skin, muscle, and tissue on the way out. This is the main reason leopards bleed when they're pulling quills out of their paws. The second type of defense is the clattering of their teeth. This happens along with the rattling of their quills, so predators get the message loud and clear. The third defense is the emission of an unpleasant odor. The smell comes from an area close to the tail of the animal. The skin produces the smell and helps to keep predators at bay. If these three defenses fail, the porcupine will resort to a fourth one, which is self-explanatory. Some predators can eat porcupines. Pythons are one of the predators, but one unlucky snake died after eating a giant porcupine. At the Lake Eland Game Reserve in South Africa, visitors noticed a giant 12-foot-long African rock python lying on the ground after it had just consumed a large animal. They noticed the python couldn't move, so they left the animal alone. Later, they found that same python dead. After cutting it open, they realized that there was a half-digested 30-pound porcupine inside its belly. The snake managed to kill and eat the animal, but when it had to regurgitate it, the quills became erect and punctured the snake's insides, killing it instantly. Other snakes that attack porcupines and try to squeeze them get their entire body pricked with giant quills. Like this guy, for example. It managed to sneak up on the porcupine but had trouble slithering away because its body was filled with quills. So does that mean no other animal can eat porcupines? Not really. Coyotes, great horned owls, and bobcats are animals that can kill and eat a porcupine. But the best predator of porcupines is the fisher. These guys are so skilled at hunting porcupines that they can take them down like the quills are no problem. Fishers will hunt down porcupines at night and take them out while they're still in their burrows, even if that means hunting them down in the middle of winter. And whenever a porcupine notices fisher tracks in the snow, it immediately returns to its den. But how do these relatively small predators kill porcupines? Can't they get quilled just like the rest of the predators? Of course they can. But the fisher is very careful. You see, the fisher knows not to attack the porcupine from the back. Instead, it'll try to attack it fast and from the front. Once killed, they'll eat the porcupine starting from the head and the neck and will slowly and carefully move down the underbelly. That being said, when the porcupine's in a hole, the fisher won't attack. Instead, it'll wait for the prey to come out and then attack. While doing research, we've managed to find another uncommon predator of porcupines. Porcupines are great swimmers thanks to their quills that are hollow and act as a flotation device on the water. This is both good and bad for a porcupine. When swimming, the quills remain above water while their soft underbelly remains vulnerable to attacks from below. This way, the snapping turtle can take down any porcupine swimming in a lake or it can kill them by striking their face when they go to drink water. However, in the majority of cases, this is what happens to anyone who attacks the mighty porcupine. YouTube thinks you should watch this video next.